Let me begin by stating that sus4 chords are an integral harmonic element employed by any modern jazz pianist when comping over a standard. And I'm not just referring to modal tunes like Maiden Voyage, but to classic standards in both major and minor keys. But how about jazz guitarists? Well, not so much, except of course for the newer generation of players. And if you're not among them, hopefully this lesson will change that. Before I continue, let me give you a quick taste of what I'm talking about. Here's one example of what a simple major 251 sounds like when we harmonized with suspended four chords. <laughs> so what you heard is what a good friend of mine calls adult chords. And that sound is reminiscent of the type of voicings a pianist like uh, Herbie Hancock might have used when comping behind Miles Davis back in the 60s. Of course, before Herbie used them, we heard them extensively in the playing of Bill Evans and McCoy Tyner. In this lesson, I want to talk about the theory behind the use of these chords and especially how guitarists can incorporate them into their playing. I will also demonstrate how I use different types of sus4 chords over well-known standards. And note that I said different types because sus4 chords actually come in different flavors depending on what context you want to apply them in. Having said that, let's take a look at the origins of the suspended fourth chord in jazz. One of the first musicians to incorporate them was pianist Bill Evans, notably on the classic 1959 recording of So What with Miles Davis. And true, that was in a modal context, but I want to start here so you can better understand how it made its way into a 2-5. If you examine the notation, to the right we see the voicing Bell Evans used on So What. Here it is conceived as a minor chord and derived from the Dorian mode. In essence, a sus4 chord can be viewed as a minor 7th chord with the 11th in the bass. Nonetheless, when employed in the context of a major 2-5, a dominant sus4 chord is derived from a mixolydian scale like the one to its left. And note that in this instance, its fourth degree functions as a chord tone, while its third instead takes on the role of a non-harmonic tone, or what some call an avoid note. Its basic formula consists of a root, the one, the fourth and the flat is seven, although it is customary to also include the ninth in order to make it a four-part voicing. However, without including the ninth, notice that the essential voicing is made up of two consecutive perfect fourths. Consequently, it is worth noting that during the early modal period, sus4 chords became the gateway that led to the development and frequent use of quartal harmony in post-bop jazz. Back to the use of sus4 chords in the context of two fives, it is the diatonic relationship between the Dorian and Mixolydian that enables us to reharmonize any two minor seven with a five seven sus4. When doing so, we are still playing the two minor seven only that in disguise. The notes are the same, except that we are placing as its base the same root as that of the dominant. So, for example, if we want to turn a D minor 7 into a G7 sus4, we in turn play a D minor 7 with a G in the base, which is its fourth. Because of this, we now analyze its notes as they relate to G being the new root, instead of D. So let's take a garden variety 251 in C. D minor, G7, C major. 
So I'm going to take this D minor 7 here, and all I'm really doing is placing the bass on its fourth, which is G. But I'm rearranging it so that now I have that G in the bass. Now, what used to be the flatted 3 of the uh, D minor becomes the flatted 7 here of the G. Now, this A, which used to be the 5th in D minor, becomes the ninth, And here I have the 4th of G, which is C, which used to be the flatted 7 in the key of uh, D minor. And there's different ways we can uh, rearrange these notes different voicings. Uh, this is the classic Bill Evans voicing. And notice, if I play this voicing up here, how easy it is to move around. Much easier to play on guitar than on piano. we got one thing going for our instrument here. So next, let's take a tune that has lots of major two fives and reharmonize every two minor seven with a five seven sus four. Let's take the first eight measures of Satin Doll. And I'm going to use not just the classic Bill Evans voicing we examined first, but several others. Also notice that when substituting two minor seven chords for five seven sus four chords, they will not clash with the existing melody. So it's something you can always resort to when comping, whether it's over the head of a standard or while backing up a soloist. Another chord we can employ the Bill Evans So What voicing over is any major seventh chord. All we have to do is build the chord using the sixth or thirteenth of the major seventh chord as the root. So in other words, if we have a G major seven, its sixth or thirteen is an E, and that would become the root of the sus4 chord. Let me demonstrate. Let's say we have this uh, G major 7 here. Its sixth would be this E. So we can play that's what it sounds like against the uh, G bass. And note that this isn't necessarily considered a reharmonization because the original G major 7 is still implied. However, if we build that same voicing over the third of the major 7, we do end up with a reharmonization because it now becomes a major 7 sharp 11 chord. So if we apply this uh, sus4 chord that we learned over the third, of a G, and I play a 2 5 1, including the 5 7 sus 4, it would sound like this with the bass. So, next, let me comp over the changes to tune up, and I will apply these voicings over some of the uh, one major seven chords. In addition, I will substitute all the two minor seven chords with a 5 7 sus 4. And be sure to stick with me because after this, I'm going to introduce you to an entirely different kind of sus 4 chord.
Before I introduce you to a different variety of SUS4 chords, I want to let you know about the download I've prepared for this lesson. It features PDFs including the theory notation and tab of nine variations of SUS4 chords as used in major and minor 2-5-1s, each notated in two different sets of strings and five lead sheets of popular standards reharmonized with the sus4 chords. Also a band in a box file of all the 251 variations using sus4 chords so you can practice them in any key or tempo. Finally, a MIDI file is also included which you can import into Guitar Pro or the free app MuseScore. And all of this is available for a nominal contribution from jazzguitar.richiezellen.com forward slash premium and you will find it under many courses. The sus4 chords that we have examined so far are primarily substitutions of the 2 minor 7 chord in the context of a major 2-5-1. However, in the instance of a minor 2-5-1 where we have a 2 minor 7 flat 5, a 5 7 flat 9 or altered dominant, and a 1 minor 7 or minor major 7, we need to derive our sus4 chord from a different source. And that's because we now want to hear the sound of the flatted 5 from the minor 2 chord within the 5 7 sus4 chord. And this is what it sounds like. And this, by the way, is again a voicing I first heard uh, Bill Evans using in his early 60s uh, trio recordings. And it is easiest understood as a minor 7 flat 5 with its 4th or 11th in the bass. And note that in this context, the chord is derived from the Locrian natural 2, which is the 6th mode generated by the melodic minor. However, when viewing its 4th note as the root, it becomes perfectly aligned with the Dorian flat 2, which is the 2nd mode generated by the melodic minor. And if we examine the notation, you'll see that in order to function as a sus4 chord, the fourth must take on the role of a fundamental chord tone while the flat 3 now acts as a sharp 9. As is the case with the Mixolydian derived sus4, its essential formula again is also 1, 4, and flat 7. However, in this instance, we include the flatted 9 not only to create a four-part voicing but because the flat 9 here is the same note that acts as the flatted 5 in a 2 minor 7 flat 5 chord. As a result it better defines its function as a 5 7 sus 4 in a minor context. So for that reason we refer to it as a dominant sus 4 flat 9. So let me show you how I would uh, apply this over a 2-5-1 in C minor, resolving to a C minor. Uh, ordinarily, we would have D minor 7 flat 5. We would have this G7 alter. And we could resolve to a C minor 6. A C minor major 7. Of course we can go to a regular minor, regular minor 7. So I'm gonna reharmonize the D minor 7 with this sus4 chord where this time I'm building it with the G of course in the bass that's the root, flat 7, flat 9, putting the fourth, which is C, on top. And that would go to the altered chord and would resolve. Okay, we could also uh, voice it in different ways. Here's another one that I really like. We have the uh, 
the root here of the G, the flat at nine, the fourth. That's just simply a, the, the uh, fifth of G. And now I have the root on top again. And notice that it's, it's like a Lydian chord. It's a Lydian shape. It's an A flat Lydian shape, only that it's seventh. It's major seven is acting as the bass. So it now becomes G seven sus four flat nine. Next, let me demonstrate how I substitute every two minor seven flat five chord with a five seven sus four flat nine chord over the changes to summertime. And I'm also going to employ the regular five seven sus four chords that we examined earlier. So that's my take on sus4 chords. I hope you learned something new and you will incorporate these chords into your playing. As usual, I appreciate your comments and thank you for your likes. And if this is your first time on this channel and you enjoyed this lesson, I want to encourage you to subscribe so you will be notified of my upcoming lessons. Until we meet again, you know the drill. Practice, practice, practice. Take a short break and practice some more. May peace be with you.